happy Sunday. So it's, it's actually the sun decided to come out. So my sewing room is a little brighter. Uh, it's been so dark and kind of dreary all day. And the sun came out about, oh, about an hour or so ago. So that that's good. <laughs> I can actually see what I'm doing <laughs> tonight. So the uh, this room is such a nice room, but and and it gets a little warm in the summer because it's on the southwest corner of the house. But man, does it nice when the when the sun comes out and I can see a little bit better. You know, it's not as dark. So hi everybody. People are coming in. Make sure you make comments now. Um. Okay, so so their um, evidently StreamYard had a new thing I was just reading. Okay, so don't forget that if you have not told, um, click, there's a little comment that you can click in this video, like right after the class, that will allow me to see your name on StreamYard. I can see it over here, So, um, but it is nice to be able to see it on StreamYard. So if you don't mind me seeing who you are, Otherwise, you just come up as Facebook user, just so you know. And I always put that comment in every video on the group. So you can go and click that link anytime and just tell StreamYard, it's okay that Jan sees your name. Okay. So if you, and, and so a lot of you have that. So I'm just kind of seeing who all's here. Can I see my your name on StreamYard? Uh, no, I, you can't, Jan. I can't, Jan. Hi, Carol. Hi, Cindy. So, no, I can't, Jan. So you'll have to go click it. So if you happen to, um, like, clear your browser history or anything like that, um, you may have to go click the button occasionally. So um, who, who's asking, can you see me? Anna, no, I cannot. No, Anna, no, I cannot. So, like, I, I clear my browser history occasionally, so I think you might have to go click it every now and then just so that I can see your names. I can see your names over here on my tablet, so it's okay if you don't want me to see your name on StreamYard. But it's not hurting anything. You know, I mean, it's not, it's just me that's going to see it, so, okay? So I just wanted to remind everybody about that. And also, I wanted to remind everybody um, that is watching on Facebook um, that, Remember to go over to YouTube and and click the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. So along with Jan, um, it helps me with YouTube. So if you're not um, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go over and do that. Because I was looking at the little stats they give us these little stats, you know, and it says somebody else said, "Can you see me?" No, Cindy, I can't. I can see you on Facebook over here. Um, but they give me these little stats and you know what the, that people of uh, the people that are watching my videos, 67% are not subscribed. So all you have to do to subscribe is hit the little subscribe button. When you're watching a video, there'll be a button like around the video area, just hit subscribe. And then, um, you, then, then that helps me with, you know, with YouTube. So, so anyway. I, I just wanted to remind people of that because a lot of people have not subscribed, obviously, because 67% of people watching my videos are not subscribed. So need to get that a little higher. So we'll see what we can do. So how's everybody today? Is everybody having a good day? We're going to have a little fun with our scan and cut tonight. You know, I really love playing with my scan and cut. And um, I've always liked uh, cutting flowers and, and like quilling that, that kind of thing. And we've done a little bit of quilling too. What other way rather than Facebook can we watch you live? Right now, Jan, the only way you can watch me live is on Facebook. Um, I would like to make that so you could also watch live on YouTube because YouTube sometimes does not have the problems that Facebook does. But sometimes it's the opposite. Um, I have to pay for StreamYard though. In order to do, I can stream to both places at the same time. So I think I I may do that, but, you know, I have to pay for it. You know, it's one of those things I, I don't make a lot of money doing this. So I, I kind of stay with the free stuff if I can. Right. So the scan and cut. So people have been asking me this question. So what we're going to be using tonight is the rotary blade. 
Okay, so the rotary blade, because we're going to cut felt, and it's very difficult to cut felt on the older machines and on this one with a standard blade, because felt is kind of dense. It's it's you know it's it's a denser fabric, and it doesn't work well with the blade because the blade kind of just scoots it all around. Okay, so. For those of you who have the older CM models, that'd be like the 550, 350, 650, okay? That would be, um, that would be, those machines will not work with this blade. So this blade only works on the SDX models. So the DX models. Uh, Marsha, if your video stopped, mine's still going. It's okay. Um, go out and come back in again. Try that. Um, so anyway, this this rotary blade only works on the DX models. So the newer models, that, and they're not all that new anymore. I mean, you know, they've been out, what, five years or so. So um, anyway, you will not be able to cut with a rotary blade with the felt. And it does not work very well with a regular blade. I have cut felt with a regular blade if I've had a bonding agent on it. So like I use um, uh, the heat and bond and I've, you know, I've had to use like a piece of felt for an applique or something. So I just put some heat and bond on the back and it was okay. It worked fine. Um, I also used some Terio magic and that seemed to work okay, but it still wants to scoot it around because it's kind of, it's a denser fabric. You know, it's not, it's not, a thinner fabric like regular cotton fabrics are, okay? All right, so I'm gonna turn off the banner here. So we're gonna be cutting with the rotary blade. Now, the other thing that I put in the, um, there's two things that I put in the comments on Facebook with this video. After the video's over, you'll be able to go back and click on the links. The link to the three little flowers, okay, is in the description below this video on Facebook, and it will also be there for YouTube, for those people who are watching on YouTube, okay? And um, also the um, the link to the rotary, I did a rotary blade class um, a few months back that I cut some flowers also because we cut some flowers for something we were doing with the little pillows, and we introduced this. So if you need, if you're just getting this blade and have not set it up, there are a couple things you got to set up on your scan and cut in the settings to run this blade. Okay. So um, I also will have put the link on Facebook and I'll have it on YouTube to the, the video where I just talked about the rotary blade and we did some cutting there. Okay. Um, that way you know where, how to set, do the settings. And you also need to have your machine updated to the most current version. At that time, it was like 1.61 or 2, and now it's like 1.7, I believe. So um, you do have to have it updated. But this rotary blade is going to work on the, um, and I'll also put a link to the rotary blade. It's up on the website, on the shieldsewingcenter.com website. It runs $50 for the for the rotary blade. And, and you get the blade, the blade holder, and also um, designs for this. So I will put that also in the description so you can, if you don't have it, you can order it. And um, it, it's a cool blade. So we're going to talk a little bit about different things. I love the rotary blade for the felt. I don't like how long it takes to sew. <laughs> so, or to cut, I should say. Um, like, so I did cut one of the flowers. So this is what we're going to make tonight. I cut one of these flowers late earlier this afternoon, I cut this one, this, and that's the same flower that we used in the, um, the rolled roses shadow box that we made a while back. And that's also in the drop box, all the files for that, that, um, shadow box are in there. And I cut that out of paper. Okay. That's the same flower. I just resized it. And then these two flowers I made, believe it or not in this one here, I made it in my, um, I made it in the Perfect Embroidery Pro, the dime software, and made it into a cut file for you, okay? So this one here was, was I actually made the design, the file, and I made the file for this flower, 
in my embroidery software and made it into a cut file. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then the little leaves here are actually in the machine. So if you want to win tonight, guess what you get to win? You're going to win a sign, all right? A flower, the one of the rolled flower si welcome signs. So if you um, comment during the video, you have the chance to win the sign, okay? Oh, oh, you, it, you had three layers on top. Whoops. <laughs> well, so anyway, I love the I love the rotary blade. And so I did cut this flower out in advance because it takes I wrote them down. It took 20 or either 20 or 21 minutes to cut this flower out. So the more intricate your design is. OK, so this is the one with all the little bumps on it. OK. This one took 20 or 21 minutes to cut out. So I didn't figure you wanted to sit here and just watch the machine cut for 20 minutes. So I went ahead and cut that one out tonight. And we're going to cut the other two so you know how I do it. Um, the other ones take, like this one takes about one or two minutes. This one here, the little fluffy one. It's like I got to get my scan and cut to turn back on again for me. There we go. And then this one takes maybe about... Mm, four minutes. It takes a little bit longer. What kind of felt is that? Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about felt. Um, ideally, I would tell you to use a good quality wool blend or wool felt. Um, I don't have very good access to those things. So these are just felts from uh, Hobby Lobby, from, you know, from Hobby Lobby, from Joann's, whatever. These are all just synthetic felts and they actually cut just fine. They're not quite as pretty, maybe, as the nicer felts. So I have a couple more samples before I turn the camera over here. I wanted to show you. So anyway, make sure that you're that you're making um, you're making comments so that you you can win a sign at the end. Okay. So give me a second here. So I made a couple more projects. I just wanted to show you some bigger things that you could make with these flowers. So I I um I do some card making and. One of these, this little saying that says it takes hands to build a house, but only hearts can build a home. Okay. So that is made with my, um, that's foiled with a mink and a mink is sort of like a little laminator. Okay. So then I had this little house. I got this little house at um, the Dollar Tree for a dollar and a quarter, the dollar and a quarter store. Okay. The Kimberbell felt, Cindy, actually is very nice. It's, it is polyester fat, um, felt, but it, it, it's a nice, very nice quality. So I, I like that. Now, the green, here, this one is all Kimberbell felt. This one is other felt. But this one here is all Kimberbell felt. So this is some of their new colors, the pink, the kind of peachy pink and the blue. And then this is the, the antique white. And then I think this is, um, I think it's called pistachio. It's the one of their greens. So they have some really cute. So anyway, this I got at the dollar store, um, the Dollar Tree, and I made the little flowers to put on that. And then I put the little saying on it. Um, and they also had a couple of other ones I was going to show you. They had a couple of other little houses. So they had this little house that has a little easel on it. I haven't made anything with this one yet. So they had this one too. And then they also had that same one in whitewash. So I bought a couple of extras. I thought they were cute. Okay. So that would be a nice little gift to give to somebody. Okay. Put a little saying on it of whatever you wanted. You could draw it. You could like, I foiled it with my mink because I love my playing with my mink. So I did that. Um, and then I found this other cute little easel that, um, I found this other cute little easel at the dollar store and um, it was just a straight easel. And then I made this one. So this one says, because of you, I laugh a little harder, cry a little less and smile a lot more. And I did, I did the flowers. So I just used the three flowers that I gave you. So you could see some other things you could make with them. Okay. So, um, and again, these are, um, this is Kimberbell felt. And so is this, but these two were just synthetic felt, the, the red and the, the red and the blue flowers. Okay. So that was another one. And this has a little easel on it too. So I got this one at the dollar store too. Isn't that cute? Mink, a mink um, for foiling. Um, 
foiling with a mink is done with like a like um a toner um paper you know toner printed paper so like toner is like a um i have a laser printer that i can you know where are the sayings from the sayings are from tailoredexpressions.com they it's one of my card making places and i love those sayings and those are toner cards so like you can just buy the little cards in a in a package and you don't have to to foil them you can just use the black cards um yes the the files are in the dropbox colleen um and a mink is like a very hot laminator so a regular laminator doesn't work very well because they're not hot enough and this is what the mink looks like i left it out so you could see so it's a little little device this one's a six inch one okay and then you feed your your card with some pretty foil through there and then it you know and then it adheres it to the toner because toner in like a laser printer is like bits of plastic and so it melts and holds the the uh foil onto the letters then so it's kind of cool i love the mink yeah so i'm having fun playing with my mink here learning about it and there you know there's a few tricks i'm still learning about but i really like it i foiled some um i was making some graduation cards today and i foiled some graduation cards too so i really like it okay so let's get busy and make some flowers and these are really fun um, to do. They're easy. So I'm going to turn my camera over. See if I can switch my microphone. Okay. So hopefully you can hear me. Okay. I always have to kind of orient the microphone in the camera a little bit when we get over here. Okay. Can, can't you? Yes, you can foil on the scan and cut. However, you use glue, Cindy, and I have had fairly good results with that. However, um, yes, I'll show you the, the graduation cards, Jan. I've got them over on the other table. They were drying because <laughs> I was ink blending them. Um, I just have the fronts. So I don't have them done yet. But um, the um, scan and cut, you, there's another device that you can also foil with. And I'm going to show you this. This is not something that Brother sells. It is sold by a company called We Are Memory Keepers. I think they they just changed their name to just We Are Memory it, or We Are Keepers. I don't know. They just changed their name a little bit. But We Are Memory Keepers. And they have a little thing called the foil quill. And it's a little device that actually goes in where the blade goes on your scan and cut. And it is heat activated and you put foil down and then you draw over the foil and it it and it cooks it to your paper if that that's that's a, an easy you know an easy description of it so we may do that this summer because i have one of those too and they are fun but i really like the mink because i can just then i can like do anything i don't have to have a design for it i can just make my um words yeah yeah, it's really cool. I have it and it, it works really well. So there's like three different tips and you plug the little tip in and, and it heats up on the tip and you just put it in the scan and cut. So it actually works really well. So, okay. I, I, I just love the, the foil, the, the um, flowers. I've been playing around with this and I really, I, I would say, ideally, I would tell you to buy, um, you know, like wool blend or wool felts but you know it, it's just not easy to find them like i can't just go anywhere and buy a really good wool blend felt because nobody has it here so most of mine are just regular felts okay all right so what we're going to do first is i'm going to go ahead and the the three designs i gave you okay are in the dropbox and i put a link under this video there's a link in the description. And then there's also, if you can't find it there, if you go to the very first post on Sew Along with Jan, the featured post, the Dropbox links are there and it's under rolled, uh, rolled flowers, rolled, let's see, rolled, rolled flowers. I think I just put it under rolled flowers. Okay. All right. So 
though that's where you go to find it um the youtube people watching on youtube find it in the description below the video okay all right so i have my mat loaded on here already so i'm gonna put this down so you can see a little bit oh yeah my favorite things it's very hard to find and then um it, tailored expressions also sells wool felt and that's another card making company that i that i like and i i would love to buy wool felt but it is quite expensive and so it just depends on how much money you want to spend on felt you know i i have been buying i like the kimberbell felt this is the, the kimberbell felt here it's very nice and it's not super cheap either but it is a very good quality felt and it is not wool there's no wool in this it's just a good quality um acrylic felt so i've been using as much of that as i can but they don't have a lot of colors but i noticed they're supposed to have some new colors um i think coming out sometime later in the summer for the fall there was going to be some darker fall colors so i was hoping that you know those might be pretty for flowers too okay all right so i have my designs on a usb stick on my machine okay yes uh oh yes etsy is a good place there are several places on etsy that sell wool felt yes there are and wool blends felt so yeah so if you want to buy some good felt you know there's a bunch of places online that you can buy good wool felt i mean and that's the thing it's like one of those things that another thing you have to buy online it's so hard to find um you know locally we don't have anybody locally that has like wool felt and wool blend felts here so I just don't here in Iowa, I don't have a lot of choices. So even in Iowa City, you know, we just don't, we basically have Joann's, you know, and they don't really have anything. So, okay. So we're going to bring up our flower. I've got my rotary blade ready, ready to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and remember, we've already got those settings set up. And again, go watch the video about the rotary blade so that you can, um, I don't know why it does this. This is really weird. I'm just going to turn this off and turn it back on again every now and then my machine doesn't like um to let me put the blade in and i haven't figured out why until i turn it off and turn it back on again so i don't know we'll see why it's i think it went to sleep too many times this afternoon it's been on so we'll turn it back on again come on there we go so if I can get it woke up. Now this is the um I have a 230D. There we go. See, it, it goes right in then. I don't know what the deal is. It's weird. Okay. Must be when it goes to sleep. Okay, so I'm gonna load my mat. And first thing we're gonna cut is let's cut this little fuzzy one. Now this little fuzzy flower is was really fun to make, and you can make it two ways. You can make it look loopy like this. Or you can cut the loops and make it, you know, like um, like a little like a little haircut on it. <laughs> so it depends on how you want it. I like the little loopies on it. Okay, so we're gonna make it that way. And then I had this kind of teal color. Now this is just a, like a twenty-five cent piece of felt, but it was a nice piece of felt. It's very smooth. And okay, so the mat that I use, I do not. I, I would tell you, do not use a. Um, do not use a fabric mat because you will never get the felt off of it, even with the rotary blade, because I've had a really hard time with it. So I use um, just a standard mat. Now you do want it to be, it needs to be pretty sticky. Okay. So um, I keep it very clean. And when I'm cutting felt, I wipe off my mat after every cut because it, otherwise it just gets so, you know, it gets so fuzzy. All right. So this is a standard mat. I would not recommend the, the fabric mat unless it's not very sticky anymore, okay? Because you'll never get this off. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use my little brayer and I'm just gonna stick my felt on here. So we're gonna cut out that long loopy one first. Okay, so that one is going to be, let's go get on my stick and then it's called loopy flower so this one's just called loopy flower 
Okay, and I cut out the rolled rows in advance because it was the one that takes 20 minutes. Now, this there's a couple of settings in the settings for the rotary blade. And I went back and reviewed my notes from the video. And I chose fine because I was doing a lot of stuff with a lot of detail like this. Okay, there is another setting called normal that they say to use for basic cuts. And I think it would go a little faster and like maybe this flower and maybe the other rolled flower would be okay with, and it might cut a little faster on that, on that setting. Um, so you might want to try it because these cut pretty quickly on the fine setting. Okay. But this one here, if you put this on basic on the normal, I don't think it would cut the detail well enough because there's some, look at all the little bumps in it. So this one takes 20 minutes to cut out. So that's why I cut it out ahead. Okay. So I'm going to get my, my loopy flower and I'm going to scan on this, on this page. Cause I want to know where my fabric is. Hopefully it's going to, there we go. So I just stuck it on anywhere. It doesn't matter where you put it. And this standard mat of mine is pretty sticky. It's a fairly new, you know, fairly new one. And, but I just wipe it off. Um, with a baby wipe after I've been using felt on it because it gets pretty messy. Okay, so here's my scan. I'm going to pull my, whoops, look what I did. See, this was this, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I pulled one of my lines out of, out of whack. So I can go back to edit here and I can hit the undo button and it'll put it back where it was. And obviously I need to, um, I need to select everything and group it because this one had all these little lines in it and it's not grouped. So I'm going to hit object edit. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to hit the little red boxes. Okay. And just so you know, this will happen to you as well because I must not have grouped it. So I'm going to hit the group, the uh, select all button. So it's going to select all the little lines and all the outlines over here. I'm going to hit. Okay. I'm going to go to object edit. And then I'm going to hit the group button, which is this one right down here. And now there's just going to be one red line around that whole design. All right. So now I'm going to pull this down. So now it's safe to pull it down. So you will need to do that in the design. I didn't realize I hadn't grouped it. So it's better to make sure you hit the select all, you know, select, select all, and then group it so that it's all in one piece. So you won't lose anything. Okay. So here's my design. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit, leave a little bit at the top. And then I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. Now I have to say this rotary blade really cuts really, really well. So I'm not going to test cut. What size is it? It is about um, four and a quarter inches long, maybe. And it um, the, the whole thing is about four and a quarter by two and three quarters, something like that, Marianne. It's not real big. So, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit please cut or please select. And then we're going to hit cut. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to test cut. You could, if you wanted to, just to make sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to cut. I've been cutting with this all afternoon. I just have it on my regular pressure, my auto pressure, my speed of three. I like to, to cut at three. Um, I think the default on these machines is actually five. It's a little fast. It makes very little difference with this blade. So I'm just, I just left it at three. I checked it to see, and it made like basically no difference. So I am going to go ahead. We can, we know it's in the right spot. So I'm just going to hit start. Now this one cuts pretty quickly. And if you haven't tried these auto blades, these things are pretty awesome because you can cut these harder to cut items you know see this one's just like straight cuts and like straight up and down and straight lines and so as you can see it's cutting just right along okay it says one minute but if i were to cut when like i said when i cut the little rows it took 20 20 or 21 minutes to cut because it does a lot of adjusting with that, um, with the auto blade. 
with the rotary blade in there. Okay. Let's see how we're doing. We must be getting about done. So it's doing all the little loops in the center. All right. So I'm going to pull this up and see how we did here. There's one little spot I noticed that didn't cut very well on that little corner. So every now and then, you know, you'll have a little spot that just won't quite cut. And I think it cuts better with the blend, um, the wool blend, than the acrylic. I Sometimes you'll have some little lines with the acrylic, like the... Okay, so now I'm going to carefully pull this up. And you could use your little spatula, but I usually can get it up okay. This is not a super duper sticky mat. So, okay. So the way this looks then is you're going to have like a line at the bottom and a line at the top, and then the loops are going to be in the middle, see, like that. Okay, but don't forget to group it before you start because you might lose one of your little lines and get your lines out of whack, okay? But I think it's about, um, yeah, it's four and a quarter by about two and three quarters or two and three quarters, Marianne, okay? So there's the little loopy flower that's cut. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? So that one cut really fast. All right. So let's cut another one. Let's cut the plain. This one's just kind of plain. Okay. Like that. And we're going to cut that one. Now that one's going to take just a little bit longer. Now, you, did you notice my mat's kind of messy here? So I'm going to grab my baby wipe. And we're going to clean it a little bit. Make sure it stays good and sticky. So I do a lot of cleaning when I'm cutting felt because it's just it just gets all over the place. And we'll let it dry for just a second before we move on. So see, look at all that that I took off there. So if you keep it clean after each after each cut, then you'll it'll it'll last much longer your mat. And I restick my mats too. You know, I restick them. So all right. So we got one cut. Let's see, I'll put this over here and get this out of the way. Now we're going to cut this one. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. Otherwise, we'll put it down here at the bottom. Put it down this way. Okay, so I'm just going to put this piece of felt on here. And this is kind of a creamy, peachy colored um, felt. I'm just going to unload so I can flip it around this way and give it a good... I usually use my brayer when I put the felt on. Because I don't, I want it to stick down pretty well. So we'll just give it a good roll. And like I said, this is a quarter piece of felt that I got at Joann's or Hobby Lobby. Can't remember which one. All right, so we'll slow this back in. But this rotary blade has really, really helped with felts. Um, it, the, the, the rotary blade, um, I, that's mostly what I use it for is to cut felt. Um, and I don't cut, I don't cut it, use it for just regular fabric. Cause I have really good luck with cutting fabric with the regular blade with the bonding agent or with like heat and bond on it. So I, I normally am cutting um, with a heat and bond, you know, I'm using it as an applique. So it's very rare. I cut fabric without um, heat and bond on it. Okay. Oops, second here. I got to find my stick. So let's go back and get our design. We're going to get the other one now. So it, it's on my stick. And this is the rolled rose, but the next one down, let's see this one, smooth flower is the name of this one. Okay. So we're going to touch, touch smooth flower and okay. And then I'm going to scan this one because we you know we just kind of toss the felt on there. So let's scan it so we know where it's at. I think I might actually have to get a new blade for my scanning or for my rotary blade because I've been using it a lot. I've been cutting a lot of flowers. It's been cutting okay though. They do last a long time. Okay, so here's my felt. You can see it on that on the screen there. It's a little light, but you can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and this was a little wet up here. So I'm going to kind of bring it over down this way. So let's bring it down to this corner. We'll just kind of bring it down here. And can you see that stripe down my screen right there? I'm going to have to, there's a little trick that Tim found out. I, if you have these stripes on your screen, there's a little thing you got to do. And I've got the paper 
in my box. I'm going to have to do it again because I've got another stripe on my screen. And and when you go to like um, scan and then uh, trace, it's going to trace that stripe now. <laughs> so right now it's okay. It's, it doesn't do, bother me, but I'm going to have to go get it done. So, okay. All right. So it's going to cut down here in this corner. We know it's going to cut. Okay. We're going to hit okay. And then I'm going to hit please select and we're going to cut. And then we're going to hit start. All right. Let me tip this down so you can see it cut. And this one's going to take a while. And these, you know, this blade is funny. It gets kind of wacky. It kind of goes, it starts shooting in and out and does all this weird stuff. And um, so I always get kind of a kick out of watching these cut because they, they do all kinds of weirdo stuff. Is that what happened to you too, Jan? There is a little thing that you can do. Uh, Tim, mine did it last summer. Oh, I was up at my dad's and he gave me a paper so I figured out what to do with it. So will you share that? Oh yeah, I can. Um, I think I can scan it. Let me make a note here real quick. I got the pencil. Let me make a note so that I don't forget to do that. Because I have it here just a couple p all you have to do is just do a couple it's like it's not like anything you have to get into the machine for or anything so the line fix papers i'll, I'll do that okay so jan i didn't realize that's what yours did too it was just a little it's just a little adjustment that you have to do and Tim gave me the papers and I tried it at home and it worked fine oh okay you couldn't cut your okay so that's what it's doing well I couldn't I couldn't decide okay so this this might fix it then if it's still there it might fix it then Jan I'll I'll uh I've got the two piece two or three pieces of paper in my box I'll get it out and and I'll upload it so all right so this is going to cut for about three minutes this one only takes about, it's not recalibrate, Donna. It's something else. Um, it was another setting, and I can't remember what it was called. It was very weird. And Tim's like, oh, that's not going to work. That's not because we thought there was something in my machine, you know, causing it. Like, you know, if you get a piece that you got a dirty um, screen underneath, um, you can have stuff like that happen, but this was just, it was something, some little electronic thing that I did quick little adjustment on and it was fine. So, cause Tim's like, oh, I doubt this is going to work, but you might as well try it, you know? And, and it did, it worked fine. But see, I noticed that I've got a, another line in another place now. This is what it does. It almost got me. It starts running in and out like this. It's really weird. So I've had to get used to the rotary blade because it cuts so different with it. Okay. Now the one thing I wanted to show you then that I love to cut flowers with. Um, I'm just while well, this is cutting, I was going to show you something and then I'll actually cut some to show you how fast it is. I have a die cutting machine. And hi Marilyn. I have a die cutting machine that I use all the time. And see how it goes in and out like that. And so I like to cut flowers this way because I have a bunch of dies. And so here's my one of my dies for a flower. And, you know, this flower here is a lot like this one. This one takes 20 minutes in the scan and cut. I could cut 20 flowers in 20 minutes with this by just putting a piece of fabric over it and running it through my die cut machine. So... That's another way to cut these flowers, and it's way faster. And I'll, I'll cut one of these out for you here in a little bit. And I also have some of these little bitty ones like this, these little little guys. And these are not supposed to cut felt, but they actually do. I have um, I made a whole bunch of these little, little dudes up, and they're so cute. Got one here. So here is the size of this one when you cut it out. So here's the die. And here's the little flower, isn't it adorable? It's about an inch in diameter. Oh, Connie, what you can do is you can clean your rollers. 
Um, if it's sticky, um, use some a little bit of goo gone, and then then make sure you uh, clean it again with like some um, soap and water, um, and just or just water. I use Norwex cloths a lot. Um, so it should be okay. I think you can get it clean, but you might have to work at it just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So you might've gotten something sticky on it and you, and you do need to keep these clean. Cause I keep mine clean. You know, I, I actually take a Norwex cloth. I have, the, I don't know if a lot of you probably know what Norwex is. And I use these cloths and I dampen them and you don't put anything on them. And then I hold it here and then I just eject the mat several times and I, on each one and then clean them because if they're not if they're not clean they don't they don't actually hold well okay so norwex is um a, a company that you um can you can clean without chemicals i i have chemical allergies so um this this little cloth you don't use soap and it, it's got like silver in it it's 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 harder to explain if you go read on their website, it's N O R E X. Um, but I clean without chemicals most of the time because I have chemical allergies. So uh, Norwex.com. So I love these little claws. They have these little bitty ones, and I use these all the time for my crafting. So they're so nice. They're just little tiny claws. Okay, so let's see how we did on this one. So let's see if this one came out okay. So this one. go. Okay, so it has a couple little spots. Sometimes with the acrylic, I notice that I'll have just like a little string that I'll want to hang on, you know, like right here. And it's part of the acrylic. And I don't think you'll get that as much. Yeah, they're like, they're kind of like a mic microfiber, but they have a special thing in it that helps with um, bacteria. So, um, so see, see, I've got a couple little strings. So I'm just going to take my little scissors. And just, and I noticed this with the acrylic felt, you know, when you get the better quality felt, you don't have that much of a problem with that. There's just another little one. See, there's just like a little string. And I think it's just the quality of the felt. I mean, if I had wool felt, I don't think it would be doing that. All right, so here's the spot. Let's see how we did. Oops, there's still a little spot here. Just a little string. And this, like I said, this was a quarter piece of felt. There we go. So I think we're getting, we're getting there. Just this little, it has a little string right there. <laughs> and I don't get these with the Kimberbell felt. So if you use some of the better felt, I, I don't get these little strings with these, with that felt. Cause that's a, it, it's still polyester, but it's a very good felt. So, all right. So there is our other flower. Yeah, they have, I have, I use Norwex like um, uh, laundry detergent. They have a descaler. That's wonderful if you have scale problems like in your shower, um, that kind of thing. So I use a lot of the products because they are chemical free and I don't break out. So that's always good, right? All right. So there's our little round flower. All right. So we got that one. And we got this one. Okay, so I cut out the 20 minute one. Here's our 20 minute flower. All right, this one's the one that takes a while. Right, I don't, I, I can't use fabric softener anyway, so I never have used fabric softener for years because it makes me break out. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get this mat out of my way. We're done cutting, okay? Glue gun, center bobble. Oh, um, I am gonna use a glue gun. You can, you can do a couple different things when it comes to put these together. So we're going to get to that right now, Colleen. And I sometimes I use the glue gun and sometimes I use um, a glue called Fast Grab Tacky Glue from Aileen's. And that also works quite well, um, especially if you're dangerous with the glue gun and you and you uh, burn your fingers. But I did want to show you my little my little die cutting machine over here. I'm going to I'm just going to show you one of my new my toys. I got this about a year ago. And this is called, this is an electric one. I also have a um, big shot. It's called just called a big shot. And um, it's a little crank one, you know, like the little crank type um, die cutters that you can 
just um, you just turn a little handle and it and it turns the, the dies through. But this one is electric, and it's called a switch. I love this. I got this about, about a year ago, and so for me to like so if I wanted to cut a whole bunch of those cute little flowers like this, you know that the ones that took me 20 minutes. Um, if I was going to cut a whole bunch of them, this is a very similar die to that. I would cut them with this. And what you do is you put the blades up. I've got my pink felt on top. I've got my machine turned on, and all I have to do is feed it in. And it comes out the other side. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's not pink, it's kind of a peachy color. All right, so here is my flower. So you can see that that really cute flower that's about the same size as the one that took me 20 minutes just took me like less than a minute, okay? So there is another flower we could roll. So I love this machine because then I don't have to sit there for 20 minutes for every single flower. So there's certain ones that I like to cut with the die. And then this one, these little skinny ones, you gotta have this little special mat in here. I know it sounds kind of like a lawnmower, doesn't it? And then this one, um, I like to cut these die with the die down, and I'm gonna put this on my mat here. Okay, so there's a little cutting mat, and then there's this little platform because this is skinny, and it goes in here like this. And then I'm gonna put the other mat on the top of it. And then this is another one, so I'm just gonna feed it in. And this one I wanted to go through twice, so I'm going to back it up because I have a backup button on this. I bought this guy. I bought this little guy. And um, you can buy all kinds of different dies and stuff for flowers. The bigger one that I had, this one here, is a Sizzix die. And they still make this one. It's called Cabbage Rose. And it's, I'll put the number up. I don't know if you can see the number 665824. And this is a Sizzix die. And then here's this little die. I think I got this one on Amazon. Okay, so see. Look how fast that cut. Didn't take me 20 minutes. If, I, if I'd cut that with the scan and cut, probably would have taken about 20 minutes. And this is what it looks like when it's rolled up. It's about as big as the end of my thumb. Isn't that cute? And I have a whole bunch of those. Is that a very expensive? No. Um, actually, I got it at Hobby Lobby. And Hobby Lobby had a thing with Sizzix for a while. And this machine's no longer available because Hobby Lobby doesn't sell anything for die cutting anymore which is really unfortunate because I love the die cut. Um, but you can get electric machines. Um, they're usually somewhere between two and $300. But the little, the little rolling machines are like 79 bucks, okay? It's a steel rule die, yes. This is a steel rule die, yep. And the little ones are called like thinlets. They, that's one name that you see, but this is the... Um, um, I've never had a problem with it, um, Donna. I have had it for a year, and um, a lot of the problems people were having with it is was user error. <laughs> so I have not had any problems with my switch at all. I love it. It works great, and it and it's electric. I I wanted a bigger electric machine. This one's nine inches, and my other little um, big shot that I love, my little rolling one that I love, that one's only six inches. So, but I like this one because it was bigger. It was nine inches and it gave me, you know, a little more option. But no, I haven't had any trouble with it at all. I use it almost every day. So, and I cut fabric with it and I cut paper with it. So, all right. So let's go, go back over here. So I wanted to show you one of my little toys. You know, I have to throw in a few of my little toys every now and then. But I love my die cutting machine. Somebody asked if it was expensive. Yeah, it, it's not terribly expensive, but um, depends on, um, you know, just depends on how much you want to spend. You know, you just have to kind of decide. And All right. So this is always hard for me because I have to get the, the camera in the right spot. Okay. So now we're going to roll these flowers. You know, leave my note over here so I won't forget. And actually, you know, maybe I'll try this. Let me try moving this one more time. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to get it in a spot where it's easier for me to get my hands in, in here to do these flowers. Because this is always hard. This camera 
doesn't work well on this table. Let me try putting it over this way a little bit. And then I'll pull it over and see if that helps. I always, I'm never close enough to what I'm working on when, I, when we do scan and cut classes and it's just hard to get the camera in the right spot. On the machine, it's good. Okay, maybe that, then I can get a little closer here. Okay, so we're gonna roll these. Oh, you know what? We gotta cut our leaves. I forgot, we gotta cut our leaves. We almost forgot our leaves, gotta have those. Let's cut our leaves. Those are in the machine. That's why I forgot. Those are in the machine. So let's go get back up here and we'll cut our leaves quick. Those are in the machine. It's one of the designs that's in the machine. And then also, just so you know, the the welcome is in the, the little welcome. And I'm going to cut that out of paper. That is also in the um, machine. But um, it's one of the basic designs. And, and but, but... It won't let me, um, it won't let me, what, how do I want to say it? It won't let me elongate it. It lets me bring it up size-wise in aspect ratio, but it won't let me like elongate it. But so what I did is I made you the welcome and it's also in the Canvas software. And then in the software, it would let me make it longer and then, and then not bring it up taller too. Does that make sense? It, it, it was an aspect ratio and here you have to use aspect ratio and I don't know why. So anyway, but let's, let's cut some leaves. We need what? Three leaves. So the leaves are actually in the machine. Yeah, we'll cut the welcome at the same time. So let's do that one too. I kind of did that later because I was, because I was, um, I had to decide how I was going to do it. So we'll do that now too. All right. So the leaves are in the second icon here. You know, here's the patterns and it's in the second icon and it's in the first icon up here where the, the flowers are. And it's this leaf right here that I used. Okay. And I'm going to cut three of them. So let's just bring, let's just bring one in right now and click. Okay. And it's huge as you can see. And I wanted it to be, about let's see i have it on a piece of paper i want it to be 1.75 inches tall and that's including the little stem that we're not going to use so let's go ahead and bring it down we'll hit set and i'm going to edit it object edit and then i'm going to bring it down size wise so that the height and this is going to come down in aspect ratio as well i'm going to bring it down till it is 1.75 inches tall. And that seemed to be a good size for the flowers, okay? And then I wanna cut three of them. So I'm just gonna, got it selected. I'm gonna hit the, the multiples right here, the, the square with the little plus sign. And then I'm gonna say three, because we're gonna cut three of them. And then let's see, I don't know, let's, I'll get my fabric, my uh, felt out here. Now this felt is from, this is my Kimberbell felt. So we'll just kind of stick it on here. Yeah, we got a cutter, welcome too. I was so excited to roll flowers, I almost forgot all the cutting. I like to roll the flowers, that's my favorite part. Okay, so we're just gonna tack this down with the brayer here. We just need a little bit up here at the top, so we'll be okay. And this is the Camberbell felt, and this is really nice felt, so it cuts really well. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click okay here, but then I want to scan so that I know where I'm gonna put my flowers so I won't waste all my pretty felt. We'll do some scanning. Oh, is that Marianne that says she cut the, the leaves from, from cork? I think they will work, Marianne, but they are um, they might be a little stiff because I actually did pinch them in the middle and make them dimensional. But I think you could make them flat. All right, so we're going to grab our little leaves and we're going to pull them up so that they're not, you know, wasting all my fabric. I'm going to leave a little space in between them. 
So we'll just pull them up here to the top. And there we go. There you go. Whoops. This one probably need better go over just a little bit. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we're going to hit okay. So I've got my auto blade in there, my rotary blade, and we're going to hit cut. And then I'm going to hit start. Now these are going to take a few minutes. Okay. So these are going to take seven minutes to cut. So I'm going to let them cut and we'll come over and we'll roll a couple roses while it's cutting. Okay. So this worked out better anyway, because I, I need to do something while it's cutting because it takes a little while. See, with that rotary blade. All right, so let's do, let's roll some of these roses. Now I have two things here. I have my my glue gun, okay. So hopefully you can see. I have my glue gun, and I have my fast tack. This is Aileen's fast grab tacky glue, okay. So that works really well too. So it works um, just as well as the the hot glue, and then you don't glue you you don't. Um, burn your fingers but sometimes i like this to put them onto the board and stuff so that's why i hooked up both of them okay so let's roll one of these roses let's roll the one that took 20 minutes there's a quick one i could get a little closer for you and how i roll these you, you know how when we did the paper flowers i used my quilling tool i think i've got it up here too remember how i used my quilling tool okay well, the felt won't fit in the little slot. You know, it's too, it's too, uh, too small. So um, I had to figure out a way that I could roll these flowers so that I could hang on to it because I just couldn't, I couldn't hang on to them. So, because uh, most people just kind of start sticking some glue in there and then they start going like this, and I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't hang on to it. So these are those cool, straight, reverse action tweezers. So they're straight but they're reverse action so when i push down they open instead of close and you want the reverse action ones because then all you have to do is put a little put them on the end of your flower like this okay and i'm going to take a couple of little turns with my tweezer okay and then i'm going to get my grab my glue here and i'm going to put a few just little drops of glue here and there as i'm going just to kind of keep things from you know moving around on me and this grabs pretty quickly so i'm just going to kind of start rolling it in and then you know we got past that glue so i'll stick a little more glue in here but the tweezers really really help and i tried just regular straight tweezers but these ones that you know you don't have to be holding them down because i couldn't hold it and twirl at the same time okay Let's go around a little bit more and I'll put a little bit more glue on and you could, like I said, you can use the hot glue here if you want to, too. It just depends on what works better for you. Sometimes I always used hot glue until I found that this glue worked good. And so I started using it and it's nice because then I don't burn my fingers as much. <laughs> I'm always burning my fingers with hot glue, but I do like the hot glue better for putting them onto the board because I think they stay better. Okay, so I'm just still got my little tweezers in there okay so we're going to go around a couple more times okay put another little dab of glue here just to help now when i get to this point what i like to do is i'm going to kind of grab it here and i'm going to wiggle my tweezer and pull it out so i don't disturb the center of my flower so see it's nice and flat on the back okay and then I'm going to take this glue and I'm going to cover this whole bottom area because this will hold all these rolls together. And again, if you're using hot glue, you can use the hot glue here that works just fine. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to lay this little fl flipper down into that glue like that and just push. And then I like to lay it down on the table and kind of press down on the center of it a little bit. And then I'm just going to let it dry. So there's our flower. Look. Cute. This, these are pretty good sized flowers. They make up about mm, about an inch and a half in diameter, rough, roughly. So isn't that cute? So there's the first flower. So that's the kind of one that looks like a rose. Okay. 
And then this one's going to be rolled the same way. So this one, um, it's got the little the little round thing in the middle. Okay. Wish you had a machine. Oh, the 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 scan and cut's really fun. I mean, we've got them at at Shield Sewing Center, and the the new one is really. I mean, we got the new ones in. We just got them not too long ago. So the 325 is it 325s so and i'm going to do the same thing with this one i'm just going to grab it with my my tweezers okay these were um i think these were those ek tools tweezers i don't think it makes a difference what brand no they're spell binders i got these up at the scrapbooking store but you should be able to find these um just look for reverse action straight reverse action tweezers but I don't remember how much the tweezers are. Second here, I gotta get my, I got a bunch of glue on the tip of my glue bottle here. I know the flowers are fun. They're just real, I, I enjoy doing these. Okay, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna grab our, this is our round one. Okay, we're gonna grab it. I'm gonna get it with the tweezers here. Make sure you can see me. And we'll take a couple turns. Okay, took me a little while to find these tweezers because I found that the scrapbookers must use them. So I got them at a scrapbooking store. Okay, and then we're gonna, I just did a little bit of glue and we're gonna take a couple more turns and do a little bit more. And I'm not putting very much on there. Keep going around. I'm not pulling it very tight, no, Jan. I do, I do roll fairly tight just by nature, but um, I am not pulling on it, no. I'm just trying to keep it even on the bottom, so no, I'm not pulling it. Oh, sounds like our our leaves are getting done. Yep, the scan and cut just finished. Just 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 a second ago. So it just finished. All right. So we'll do a little bit more glue. Just keep going. And I like to put a little glue down towards the bottom, you know, when I'm getting ready to put the bottom on. So we'll turn it that way, but don't pull, you know, don't pull tight. It's going to be hard to, you don't want them to be so tight that they don't have some flare to them. So, all right, so I'm getting down to the end and I'm just going to wiggle my, my tweezers and pull them out just carefully. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the little flapper to the bottom here and we'll just put some glue on the bottom. My glue, I, I need to get a new bottle because I didn't realize I had this. And somebody suggested this on a site that I was watching and I had some, I couldn't believe I actually had it. So I need to get a new bottle because it's kind of stiff. <laughs> I've had it for a while, I know, and it's kind of stiff. Okay, you got to squeeze really hard. Okay, so I'm going to get that little flipper up there in my glue. And then I'll just set it down on my table and give it a little push so that it dries. And there's the spray flower. Isn't that cute? And it's about the same size as the other one. This one might be just a smidgen bigger. Got this one, I need to turn it just a little bit more. There we go. That's the thing that's nice about the, um, the wet glue. It does give you just a little bit of uh, wiggle room if you need to move something. I think this one's about, yeah, it's about an inch and a half. They're both about the same size. Okay, so there's that one. And that one's kind of peachy colored. Okay, so let's let's take a look at our leaves here. So here's our leaves. We'll get our, our welcome going here. So here's our leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this up. And if the little stems break off, that's fine because we're not going to use them. I'm just going to cut them off anyway. But did you notice how this went, this cut, how nicely this cut? 
this is this is that better quality felt and it does really cut nicely um it's it if you buy better felt it does cut better than the cheap stuff so um this one i noticed that these cut really nice and clean so and you may pull off your little end which is fine i was going to cut them off anyway so i'm just going to cut those little tails off and i'm just going to use this part okay so cut off our leaves here we'll do our little trim and then i'm gonna wipe my little mat off again because i need to do some paper now so okay all right get those little pieces off of there and then i'm going to get my baby wipe out and wipe it off again otherwise they get pretty dirty the one thing about the cheaper felt though if you do make a lot of mistakes like me then you don't have too much wrapped up in it you know i'm always cut i cut things and then i cut them wrong or you know and i'm like oh shoot i did that you know but okay get this clean so i do like to clean when i'm when i'm cutting felt because it is messy see look at all that felt that was on there so we'll let it dry just a little bit while we get ready to get our piece of paper up here. All right, so the welcome. So let me talk about the welcome. Like I said, it's in the machine. But when I went to use it, just like the leaves were in the machine, but when I went to use it, it's here and it's in these words right here. And it's in this first one, bon, bon voyage. Okay, so it's under uh, welcome, it's under W. I think it's at the bottom, nearly at the bottom uh right here okay so when i went to go look at it i thought oh great you know i want it to be i need it to be about a half one and a half inches tall and five inches wide well see this little button right here that little button is the one that lets you change the width and the height independently of one another you see it's grayed out so it wouldn't let me do it in here but this same little word welcome is in the software. So it's in Canvas Workspace. So you can play then with the in, independently with the sizes. So I actually took this in and got it at in the, um, that's why I gave it to everybody because I worked with it in Canvas Workspace. So I opened it up and in Canvas Workspace and I made it one and a half inches high and five inches long. So I elongated it just a little bit. Okay, so I'll show you again on the little plaque here. Okay. So I made it just a little bit longer. And it still looks fine. It doesn't look weird or anything. It would just elongated it just a little bit. All right. So that's the size. It was one and a half by five. So I'm just going to go get it off of my stick then to cut it. Hopefully my mat is tacking up here. And whoops, I'm going to go get my pattern retrieve it from my stick and my welcome is down here and it says that let's check the, the measurement to make sure it was right it says that it is one and a half by five which is what what i wanted it to be okay and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to lay my paper now this is a good quality can you bend the word welcome? No, you can't because it's like already, it's a digitized word. So no, you could, if you made your own, Colleen, you could make it out of another, but it really wouldn't fit on my little plaque. So I made it straight. Now this is a good quality hundred pound cardstock. Um, I get this also from, I got this from Tailored Expressions. This is a really good cardstock. So we're gonna use that. And I will put that find here it is my brayer. Make sure it sticks down well. Now this we're gonna cut with my with my regular blade. Now this runs this is about five and a quarter inches, so I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room, but it's big enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my regular auto blade, you know, the black blade that we usually use. I'm gonna put it back in to my machine and i am going to hit okay up here and then i'm going to scan so i know where my paper is 
And while this is cutting, we'll we'll fit, work on our roses. And I like to keep my my rotary blade covered because that little you know shirt, shirt, certainly I will cut my finger on that little round blade thing. All right, so here's our welcome. And I'm it just barely I know I use this piece of paper, so I think it fits on there. We'll see. Hopefully we don't have to cut it twice. It just is barely big enough. Okay. And then I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to cut this one. Because I know it just barely fit because it's like it's about a quarter of an inch longer than the design. <laughs> so because I had some little panels that I had. So it was nice to have those to stick on the mat. Okay. So it's going to do its cutting. And this is only going to take about a minute or so. But let's go ahead and roll this other flower while it's up. Oh, now it's 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 re-estimating its time, so it says two minutes. So let's let's go ahead and work on a flower while it's cutting. You can zoom in. It's really hard though, Donna, when it's black <laughs> to see it. And and um, I know I it's just barely big enough. I knew it'll fit. It'll just barely fit. So okay. So yes, you can zoom in to to, to check it a little bit closer. Okay, so now this other flower is a little different. And um, I'd never made a flower like this before. And I saw one and I thought, hey, that's really cool. And I wanted to see how they made it. And I wasn't sure how they made it. So what they did, is, it's just like, you know, a rectangle with all these little lines in it. And I've seen quite a few of these in there. So to make this one, we're going to take the glue and we're going to run the glue along one long edge. So I'm just going to take my glue, if it'll come out. I might have to use my hot glue because this one's getting kind of dry. Let's see if it'll come out now. I have to squeeze awful hard to get it to come out. All right, there it's coming. So we're just going to go along the end here. I'm going along one long edge. Okay. You know, I think there is a setting on there to lighten the, the background. There's either a background setting or something to change the color of the outlines. And um, it's so rare that I use black that I don't think about it, you know, doing it, Donna. So, yes, I think there is a way to do that. All right. So let's see. I'm going to grab my, hopefully this is okay. I think I got it on the, woohoo, I think it's there. I think we're good. I think, it, I think it made it on there, so I think we're going to make it. Okay, so here is my glue line. So then what I'm going to do is to make this flower, we're going to fold this in half and then make the two long sides meet. So we're going to glue that down and make the edges even like that first. Now, if you want your flower to be blunt on the ends, you would then take your scissors and you would cut it and then if it's a little too long for you, you could cut it off a little bit. But if you want them to be blunt, now I want them to be loopy like that. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine loopy. And if you want them blunt, you can cut them off here. And then you can actually cut them down. You might need to cut them down a little bit. It might be a little long. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. Okay, so now we can roll it. And so after we get it folded, then we can roll it. So I'm just going to let it dry just a little bit. So it tack that tacky's up pretty pretty quickly. So, all right. So let me grab my my uh, tweezers again. I'm going to have to adjust my my welcome over here. So let's do this quickly while this is drying just a little bit. And I notice that um, my blade. This is a really good paper, and normally I don't have too much trouble with it but my blade ripped just a little bit. I think it's still going to be okay. So let me see. I'm getting my little spatula out so I can get down underneath here. I think I need a new blade. My blade is just a little bit dull because I've been cutting uh, chipboard with this blade, and it's just a little bit dull. And so I think it's time for the new, the new blade. And so what I'm going to have to do then, I don't know if you can see this little spot right here, 
is just in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull this back out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to trim that little, that little spot right there. Didn't cut this little spot right here. It just wasn't much. <laughs> it was like about a quarter of an inch, but I think my blade is just at the point of being needing to be changed. Okay. So there's our welcome. And let me grab my glasses here real quick because I, I see there's just a little bit of a piece of paper in there yet. And it's black, of course, so I can't see without my glasses. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I just need to trim just that. There was just a little little sliver right there that needed to be trimmed out. There we go. All right. That looks better. So there's our welcome. Now, the other thing I've been playing around with I was tempted and I should try, we, maybe we could try it while we're doing the other ones. Let's, let's try another one because there's enough to put another, another um, welcome on here. I'm going to try it. I've been playing around by using that vinyl auto blade. The vinyl auto blade is a 45 degree blade and this one is a 60 degree blade. 60 degree blades do not cut detail as well as a 45 degree blade. And like our old machines that we had, those standard blades, the ones with the teal colored holder, that was a um, 45 degree blade. And um, so while we're doing our leaves and stuff, we're, we're gonna try cutting that again. I wanna show you some of the things that I've been playing around with. And I've been using that vinyl blade because it's it's a it's, it cuts detail better. Even though this isn't vinyl, it still cuts really well. All right, so this is the vinyl auto blade, the light blue one. We're gonna, let's try putting this one in and see how it cuts the cardstock. I haven't I haven't tried this yet, so you guys are gonna get to experiment with me. How about that? The other one cut fine. It just I think it might cut it better if it wasn't so, um, if the uh, blade wasn't so steep. So let's try it. Because I was playing with it last week when I was doing some other stuff, and it cut really well. Okay, so we're hit cut. And I think it's in the same spot. Maybe I should go back and check it though. Oops, hit the back button. Let's just check it to make sure that it's okay. Because I've got the paper in the same spot. So hopefully it just barely fits, but all right. So let's give her a whirl and see what happens while we're working on our doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt to experiment, does it? Okay. So we got our welcome. I'll put my, our welcome over here. And then let's go play with this. Let's play with our flowers a little bit more. Okay, so we're ready to... This one's kind of dried now. Get some of my paper out of the way. Okay. Yep, I do a lot of experiment. Whoops, see, my, my, my paper didn't stick. Stop the second my paper didn't stick. Quit cutting. Okay. My paper didn't stick. So I've got another piece of paper here somewhere. Because I really do want to try that and see if it works. I'm going to bring it down here where it's stickier. I'm going to give it a whirl, see if it works better. Because I, I cut something the other night. I was doing an Easter card for Judy. And I was cutting a very, very, very delicate little word Easter. And it wouldn't cut at all with the, the black regular auto blade. And I put this uh, the vinyl auto blade in there. And oh my gosh, it was so much better. So I'm going to go back over here for a second. Show you what I'm doing. I'm just going to rescan here because I need to know where this at is. Because I moved it down. My mat needs to be cleaned. So that's one of the things I'm going to do after class is clean it again. Been cutting a lot of felt the last couple weeks. Okay, so let's bring this down. We can be working on something else while this is cutting. See if it cuts. Okay, so there we go. All right. I'm going to tell it to cut. Got it nice stuck down. So let's see what happens here. But the 45 degree blade 
is better for detail. And this is kind of a detailed little thing. You can see it has a lot of little ins and outs and everything, and it cut fine. But I, I just want to see if it cuts better with this blade, because it did sure did with my other one by like a lot better. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now this one is going to be rolled kind of the same way. So I'm going to take my tweezers over here. Okay. And I'm going to roll a couple rolls and then I'm going to put a little glue in here. <laughs> Most of your stuff is at Marianne. Most of your stuff is an experiment. You know, it's fun to experiment. Okay, so we're going to roll this. And I'm trying to keep the bottoms even. Put a little more glue on. Well, it's done cutting. I think it did better. I'll show you. I think it did a better job. But I like, so I don't cut vinyl with the half cut. I cut it with my old blade, like we had the class, you know, a couple weeks or about a month ago. And, um, but that 45 degree blade sure does cut um, detail better. So I'm going to start using that blade just to cut like paper. And, you know, I've been cutting a lot of paper and stuff and, and I want some stuff to be very neatly cut and I'll show you because this looks pretty good over here. So I'm going to take this into here and I'm going to wiggle my, my tweezer and then we're going to squeeze. I'm going to squeeze right here and let it catch. So it's just going to look like that on the bottom. Okay. Isn't that cute? So it's going to be all foofy and fluffy. Isn't that cute? I love this flower. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'll, how the heck do they make that? And so I started looking at some of the videos that people make in these flowers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so easy. So isn't that cute? So there's that flower. So let's just, I'll just hold it a little bit longer. Okay, there we go. So let's let it dry. And I want to show you my welcome. I think this one turned out better. So this is the one, the first one we cut out. I wanted to show you. And I'll, I'll hold them up really close so you can see. This is with the vinyl auto blade, and it's a 45 degree blade. And it cuts detail way better. And oh my gosh, this is like way better. <laughs> okay, let me whoop, here's my spatula. Take this carefully off. I had it stuck on there pretty good, so it's a little stuck, but I think it's going to come off okay. And you could have cut this out of vinyl, but, you know, on the wood, the little wood plaque, vinyl doesn't stick very well on the wood, okay? So I usually, I, so I, that's why I use paper. Okay, so look at the difference. Now, I don't know if you can see it real well. I hope you can. Let me hold it up. This is very, very clean. And I don't know if you can see like in these little crevices and stuff on this one, but there's little bunches of fat of uh, paper where it did cut real clean. I mean, it looks okay. It's not terrible, but I can really see a dip. Maybe if I take a picture of it later and put it up, I think you'll be able to see this one's way better. So this was with the vinyl auto blade, which is 45 degrees. And this looks really, really nice. So, um, yes, you could do all kinds of different kinds of felts. Yep. But this, so that we're going to use this welcome. This one turned out really, really well, but that blade is better for detail. Okay. So I've been using it now for paper instead of vinyl. Cause I don't cut vinyl with it, but I'm going to use it for my paper because I often need something very detailed to cut. Okay. So there's our, so there's our welcome. The other one looks fine. I'll keep it and I'll use it for something else. All right. I, it really did. It, I, I just, I was really surprised. I mean, when I tried this a couple weeks ago when I was making Easter cards, I needed this teeny tiny little Easter and it would not cut with that black blade at all. And I, I cut it with the, I thought, well, I wonder if that one will work. So I did and it worked great. Okay. So I think we're done with the cutting now. I think we got everything cut that we need. All right. So here's my, I don't know, maybe if I put it on a white piece of paper, you can see it. Let me lay, I'm going to turn this over. 
and see if you can tell the difference because there's a way lot of difference in them. So I'm going to put it this way. Oops, make sure we get it the right way. There we go. Because this one looks much, um, there, there's like little pieces that are sticking out. And, and it's it's amazing how much difference it is. So I, I've, I've started using that blade for real detailed stuff. Because I actually cut with a 45 degree blade probably 90% of the time with the old machines. And I couldn't figure out why they made this one 60 degree. But I suppose because they wanted it to cut everything. But it doesn't cut detail really well. So anyway, so that I think that does a good job. Okay, so now we're going to work on the leaves. So I have my three little leaves here. And what I did with my little leaves, and I am going to use hot glue for this just because it grabs a lot faster. But I want them to be dimensional. So I'm going to take just a little daub of hot glue and put it in the center here at the bottom. And I'm just going to pinch them together like this. And just be careful not to burn your fingers. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch them together like that so then there's a little so then they're dimensional like that okay Marianne did you try it too did you try cutting it with um with the that other blade um this is really good paper Jan um I think it's the the blade makes a huge difference and I've always wondered why they had a 60 degree blade because when I opened it up the first day I opened it up, I remember opening it up thinking, oh my gosh, that's a 60 degree blade. How's that going to cut vinyl? And and it does, but not the same way that, um, isn't that cute? So then it just made them have a little dimension. So we're going to do all three of them. I thought this would be a fun little project. I thought everybody would get a kick out of this. I like to do little fun little things that are just different. All right, so we're going to pinch this one. Yep, but it stuck to my finger too. All right. Yeah, this is really good cardstock though. This is like um, 100 pound. Um, this is, you know, expensive cardstock. So, um, but yeah, but man, does that other one look different? It looks really different. Like this is the one on with the six with the 60 degree blade. I don't know if you can see the little the little spots over here. And then this one is so clean. Yeah, really, really different. So I'll set this one aside because we're going to use this one. Okay. Yes, it does make a very, a very big difference though, Jan, if what kind of cardstock you use. Okay, so I've got my leaves. So we've got our little leaves here. And then let's see, get this out of the way. And now we're going to put this together. You want to be, you want to see what this leaf this flower looks like the one I cut out with the die cut this one's really cool too this one's neat to do and I don't normally glue this one I just I just twirl it this one has like an extra piece to it it's really neat I don't normally glue on this one because it's got these little narrow spots on it so I usually just try to keep it straight <laughs> this is called a cottage rose I think is what they called it it's about the same size. It might be just a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm bring it around. Okay. And this is the one I cut with the die cut machine. One of them. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Bring it in here. Yeah, I've got to get another bottle of glue. This one's so stiff. You can hardly squeeze it. Okay, so there's that. And then this one has an extra little piece that you stick on the bottom and bring it up. So like this one, you put a little bit of glue at the bottom here. I'll use some hot glue on this one, make it faster. And then like this, and then you bring it up. Oops, I think I need to turn it though. I think I need to turn it this way. Then you bring up the other leaves, the little petals, like this. Uh, yes, Jan, it is sold, and I'm knocking on wood. It's supposed The closing supposed to be on Friday. 
this next Friday. Okay. So then what you do is you take the, the little bit of glue on these and then you pull them up like this. This one's neat. I do really like this one. This is one of the, the dies that I bought. This is a Sizzix die. And I have two or three other ones too. But then you just pull it up like that. And kind of squeeze it. But that one's really pretty. Also. That one. And then the other one is that little bitty one. And this one, I already showed you that one. This one, you just roll it the same way. And it's this one. And this one turned out really cute too. I love doing these little flowers and I've always made these out of paper. And then I started to decide, you know, I, I found out that I can do them out of felt too. I need just to add a little bit more glue on this, these two little pieces just to make them come together. So yeah, you know, I'll fix that later, but that's those other flowers. So you can kind of see what they look like. All right. And my paper towel, cause I've got glue on my fingers now. I know, isn't it cool? And then I've got a whole bunch of those little metal dies. I got a whole bunch of these. And look at all the different ones I have. So like, here's one that's fluffy. And they're all these little itty bitty ones. This is not, um, these these were not expensive dies. I, I didn't pay a whole lot for these. And then here's another one that's all fuzzy. Isn't this one neat? But these are all about as big around as the end of my thumb. They're smaller dies. But they really do, all of them were cut different. They're, I must have about 10 or 12 different ones. I love I love dies. So um, I've been die cutting for a long time. So the card making, you know, even though I hadn't made cards before, I still had die cut things. So, all right. So let's put this together. I bought the little um, boards at um, Hobby Lobby and they were, you know, one of the wood pile things. And then there was four of them in a little pack. They were, these were whitewashed. So, um, so they look, you know, kind of distressed, but they were pretty. Um, but it's really hard to um, put like, um, second, I'm trying to move this camera so it's a little bit more out of my way. I have a hard time with the camera on this table. <laughs> Okay, so what I did is I laid this down, I pull back so you can see what I'm doing, okay? I laid this down, and I just kind of laid everything out, so I kind of knew where I wanted it. And this is the nicer die cut, okay? We do with the paper, and I just, I do a lot of eyeballing. So I kind of started with this flower in the middle, because I knew that I wanted that one in the middle, okay? And then I put my little rose over here like that. And then I put my little straight flower over here like that. You know, I don't know where I got these dies. Somebody asked that they like, you like this little die or you like the Sizzix die? The Sizzix die, I gave you the number on that. Okay, so then I kind of got it. Whoops, like we're a little off center, so we're going to pull this over a little bit. Like that. So just so I have an idea where I'm going to put things. Okay. Yeah. Spring flowers has all the little flowers. That's where I saw them a couple of years ago. And I, I thought those would be fun to make the Kimberbell. So, all right. So what we'll do, I know that I'm going to be okay. So we're, what I did is I kind of put my, I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of put the blue flower kind of in the center towards the top there. So let's start with that one. So everything's going to fit. And this is when I like to use the hot glue because it sticks faster and tighter, okay? So I'm gonna kind of look at this, and you may see my head. I have to be able to see what I'm doing here. See if I can get it kind of centered. Let me t flip it up here, make sure I kind of got it towards the top. I think we're good. <laughs> Hopefully I got it kind of centered. What do you think? So I'm gonna push down in the center a little bit just to give it a good push, and then we'll fluff it again. So I can get my welcome out of the way. How'd I do? Yeah, these are like thin lit dies, Donna. These the other ones. These were like the thin lit dies. But these aren't Sizzix dies. I remember where I got those. 
Okay, so there's that one. Then we're going to put this one over here. Let's see. I think I'm going to put it kind of like this. A little hot glue on there. I think I want to turn it this way. Kind of like that. Glue it down. And we'll get the other one over here. And let's see here. I'll kind of turn it this way. You kind of turn them, you know, you can kind of turn them different ways, depending on how you like it. Like that. That'd be good. Push it down. Okay. Then you can fluff your your floof, your floofy flower with the way you want it. Looks pretty good. I kind of like to push them down in the center a little bit because it gives it a little bit more of a dimension in the middle. Okay, so now let's put our flowers on. And I think I put a flower here, a flower here, and then one like one in the middle. So let's see if we can get the middle one on here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue like on the spine here so that it still kind of stays up a little bit. I'm going to put my finger in there to see if I can keep it from flattening out on me. We'll stick it up inside there. Like that. And then we're going to put a couple up in here. We'll stick them in this little these little spaces up here. Okay. But yeah, if you just Google um, like uh, rolled flower dyes, you should be able to find quite a few different ones. Because if you have a, already have a die cutting machine. Yeah, you can. I am not good with tweezers, Donna. <laughs> the only time I use them is when I need to roll a flower, but I'm not good at positioning anything with tweezers. I have to use my fingers. <laughs> I don't do very well with with the with the tweezers because I certainly would have it a mess if I tried to do that. Okay, so there's our flower. Look, you can kind of move your leaves the way you want them. Get this one in here. Isn't that cute, so cute. Okay, then we're gonna put our little welcome down here. And I just used um, glue for that. And I, I use, um, I've used this glue for years. This is my glue that I always use for quilling. It's that uh, Craft Bond precision tip, those little precision tip things. Just love these, this glue. So it, I can go, I'm going to put it, you know, make sure we get it the right side up here. Okay. And I'm just going to turn over and I'm going to put some glue on here, hopefully. Not have it all covered in glue, just a second. This is a new glue bottle, so it's I have to be very... Very careful not to squeeze too hard. <laughs> this one's new. I had some old ones and they were very, very, um, they were very, very dry. So I had to squeeze and these you do not. I just got them the other day. Just put some dots on. I've been trying out some uh, Gina K Designs glue and theirs is called Connect Glue and it's really good glue too. So I have some of that, but I, I usually use this when I'm working with my paper, just because I've always used it, I guess. Put a little dot down here. All right. So we're going to turn this over. Get it lined up. We're going to, we're just going to kind of do the eyeball method here. There we go. I look pretty straight. The one thing I like about this die cut is guess what? It isn't straight. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight because it really doesn't run perfectly straight anyway. So who knows, right? There we go. What do you think? Does that look okay? It would take you all day to do this. What oh the the brand this is um craft bond. This is the Elmer's craft bond, and it's one of those little pre precision tip. Um, bottles. I love these. I, I used it for quilling and I get these at Hobby Lobby. They have them now. See, they never had them there before. So, all right. So there is my welcome. Isn't that cute? And then we, you know, we have to do, we have to do some embellishments here. So we have to put some really cute little, little rhinestones. 
got this really cool thing full of rhinestones. So we'll put some craft bond in the middle here of these, and we're going to put a rhinestone in there. Put a couple couple rhinestones in. All right, let's see. Well, I'm going to have to put my glasses on for these. Let's see. If I kind of want a medium-sized one, here's kind of a medium-sized one. Put one, a, one bigger one and one smaller one. How about that? So we'll put this in there. You could use your tweezers here too, but I never do. I just put them in with my fingers. And the glue dries clear, so if you see a little glue, it won't be there once it dries. Let's get a little bit bigger one here. Put this one over here. Have to have some rhinestones. There we go. Let those dry. Yeah, I got this little container with all these rhinestones. Aren't those cool? Oh, yeah, they are really sparkly because did you see how sparkly these look? Did you see the sparkle on these? Because I got rhinestones on these too. So they're so pretty. So I really like these were fun to make. I've been having fun making flowers. We need to have some spring, don't we? So it's been fun to make flowers. There we go. Look. Let those dry. I won't pick it up too much too much until those get dried in there. But what do you think? How'd we do? So somebody's gonna win this. I, I do. I like the I like the sparkle in there in the centers. Okay. So what do you think? I think this is a fun project. This was really fun. I was I was anxious to do this. I love to do things with a scan and cut. And um, there's so many fun things you can do with it. You can do things that are, you know. Some things are, are you know, paper crafting. There, you don't have to do paper crafting with it. You can do fabric. You can do, you know, oh yeah, a nice Mother's Day gift. And then those other, the the one about the house, I thought would make a nice Mother's Day gift. This one. So I thought this would make a nice Mother's Day gift for somebody. So I I enjoyed making these because now this is the felt. This is all Kimberbell felt, and this really cut nice. Did you say where you got the board? Oh, the little boards I got at Hobby Lobby back in the, like the little wood, what are they called? Wood pile. I got those at Hobby Lobby and there was four of them in a little package and they were like six inches long ish. So, okay. So this is going to get to go to somebody. Somebody's going to get the little welcome sign. So if you are from away from here, if you can't pick it up at one of our stores, um, you just need to make sure you personal message me your address so that I can mail it to you. I just need your mailing address so I can mail it to you, okay? All right, so the second here, I got to get my tablet. I'll bring the bring the camera back up so we can we can have our drawing. Give me a second here. And oops. There we go. Okay. I'm back, yay. All right, so isn't it pretty? I think it's pretty. So this is what somebody's gonna win. You're gonna win the one that I made in class, okay? And it's really fun. These are fun to do, but don't you like? I was very pleased with the cut. I learned that kind of by accident um, a couple weeks ago when I was making those Easter cards because my Easter cards had this teeny, tiny, tiny little, um, Easter and it was so tiny that I tried to cut it with the other blade and it just wouldn't cut. I mean, it simply just would not cut and just look how clean this is. I was just, I mean, so I, I, that's the way I'm going to be cutting all these little teeny tiny little things. So, all right. So let's see who was going to win the little sign. Okay. So I got to get my, my comments going here. I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> I'm mixing them up. All right. I'm going to put my finger down and it says, uh, Donna lines, Donna lines. Yeah. I like it too, because it isn't straight. And then if it doesn't, if you don't get it on straight, it's fine. Right. So Donna lines, you are the winner of the, the little flower, the little welcome sign. So Donna, you'll have to, um, personal message me your mailing address and I will mail this to you. So this is what you get. Cool. All right. So next week, 
Um, it's the fifth Sunday. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you feel special, Donna. That you are special. You won the little, the little, the little plaque. Um, so next week is the fifth Sunday. So I always take the fifth Sunday off. So we're not going to have a class next week. We're going to, I'm going to have a week off. Um, next weekend, hopefully my father's house is sold on Friday. So I would, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, celebrate a little bit next weekend and taking the weekend off, um, of, of, of being the owner of two houses. I'm hoping I will be down to one house. So that is my goal for the weekend. Um, and then the following week, the first weekend in May, then we will start working on the June cutie. So the, the, the little watermelon cutie is what we'll be working on then the first weekend in June. So, or the first weekend in May, I should say. So the June cute, cutie in May. So, all right. So if there's, are, are there any other questions? Is everybody doing okay? Did everybody understand what I did? And and uh, aren't the, isn't that a cute little project? And I just really enjoyed, these were fun too. And I did the same flowers so that you could see some other things you could do with the same flowers. It's just these three. And I did this one too. So, yep, same three flowers. And I put five leaves on this one. And I think there's two on this one. Yeah, two on this one. So I, I enjoyed, I did this one last weekend and this one I just did this week. So I've been kind of playing around. I think I might make a couple more yet. So, all right. So we will be seeing you. Remember next week, we're going to be off. And then the following week, the first weekend in May, what is, what day is that anyway? Somebody give me a date. Oh, uh, how hard do you wipe your mats? I do. I give them a pretty good scrub. Um, see, what day is that? The first weekend in May. Don't even know. I haven't looked at the calendar. Where's May? Here's April. May, it'd be the 7th. Okay. Because next week is the 30th. So it'd be the 7th of May. So that's, then we'll have a class. We'll have a couple classes and then we're going to have a week off in May too, because it's Memorial Day weekend. So we'll take Memorial Day weekend off too. So no, I do, I do give them a pretty good scrub when I clean them because they do get, um, they do get pretty dirty. <laughs> so, um, especially with the felt. So keep, keep them clean, like wipe them off after every single felt cut because they really do last longer that way. Especially if you're cutting like these, when I was cutting these, these real dark colors, it was really messy. So I, I really, you know, wiped these down really well when I was working on them. So I like the blue and the red though. So, all right. So thank you so much for joining me tonight and congratulations, Donna. And I will, you send me your, your address and I will mail you your little prize. So thanks everybody. Have a good evening. Good night.